fingers crossed. And I hope it's somewhere around here. <laughs> When people think of beautiful and majestic landscapes, some of the first things that come to mind are mountains. Of all of the North American mountain ranges, some of the most grand are the Sierra Nevadas. Separating California from the rest of the country, the Sierra Nevadas have always been a source of wonder and mystique. Once serving as a last obstacle for pioneers hoping to start a new life along the Pacific coast, these mountains are now a must-visit travel destination for skiers, campers, and hikers. When visiting California, we headed into the Sierra Nevada mountains, hoping to find some of the incredible bird species that live there. Fortunately for us, our friend and professional birding guide Rachel would be taking us to some of the best spots to find some specialized mountain species. Along the way, we kept our eyes and ears open, hoping to pick up some of our target birds before even making it up to our higher elevation stops. So what we're doing right now is we're driving along, listening to see if we can hear any of our target species. And uh, if we can't hear anything just driving, we're probably going to get out and try to walk. But hopefully there'll be a sign of some of the cool birds that we're looking for soon. Out of all of the unique species that spend time in California's Sierra Nevada mountains, the two at the top of our list to try to see were the Williamson Sapsucker and the Clark's Nutcracker. We we're really hoping for Clark's Nutcracker up in this high elevation. It's a bird that's been really tough for me to try to get. I've been to Yellowstone area and didn't see him there. There was one that visited Wisconsin that I wasn't able to see. So it's kind of something of a nemesis bird. And I'm hoping that we can find one and one that will give us some decent looks. Along the main road were many different pull-offs. We stopped at a few of them, seeing our first signs of some higher elevation birds got to see a perched Anna's hummingbird, which is pretty neat, and then heard a very noticeable Townsend solitaire, but could not get a visual on it. But that's a bird that's really cool. It actually goes through Wisconsin, so we're kind of familiar with it. You can sometimes get them in the winter. I'd love to get a look at one if we can here, but if not, at least we did hear it. After a windy but beautiful drive, we ended up at Huntington Lake, where we would be spending much of the day searching the forest lined roads and nearby campgrounds. While we hadn't seen any signs of our target species yet, the habitat certainly looked good. You think we're going to find these birds? Yep, I'm confident. We are trekking into a campground to hopefully find Williamson Sapsucker and Clark's Nutcracker. This is definitely the right habitat. There's still some snow around, very mountainous, lots of pine, so it looks perfect for them. Ordinarily, the best place to find our target birds would be at an even greater elevation, but an abnormally high amount of winter snow meant that the road we would need to take would be impassable. The Clark's Nutcracker and the Williamson Sapsucker wouldn't be much of an issue had it not been for the fact that California's gotten a ton of snow this year. So the road that you usually go up to the highest elevations where these birds would be common is not accessible. So we're trying to find some that are in lower elevation than they normally would be, which is what's making it tough. Even without the ability to quite make it into the best habitat, we held out hope anyways and started walking one of the forest roads. Here we found many brewer's blackbirds, as well as a few western specialty birds. Just got a cool species, the band-tailed pigeon. They have a really deep cooing noise that they make that almost sounds like an owl when you first hear it, but there's a pretty decent group of them here. We got some looks at them, and then they flew into the pines, so that's a nice species to add to the list. Walking this road had some nice white-headed woodpecker views, a female that was foraging. Um, a little overcast, haven't heard anything that sounds like Clark's yet, but there's still some time. With the road not yielding either of our target species, we switched to a campground where we came across something we weren't used to seeing during the warmer months of the year. It's definitely neat to see snow, but it's weird to hear stuff like warbling vireo and then also see snow on the ground, because for us that's so foreign. Um, a lot of this snow is kind of on its last legs, so it should be out of here soon, that's what Rachel said. Um, but right now, we're kind of enjoying it. The melting snow created many cold water streams, which worked out extremely well for us because they created habitat for one of the most unique bird species in the entire country. Dipper! It's dipping! It's got that real short tail and it's doing kind of a northern water thrush like Bob. Like a spotted sandpiper Bob. What an 
like such a unique behavior. But we had quick glances one the other day, so it's, it's an awesome redemption to see this one, of course. We continued walking around the campsites, finding a variety of birds. We even had a few more encounters with the American Dipper. But sadly, we couldn't locate a Williamson Sapsucker or a Clark's Nutcracker. I just had a really neat experience with an American Dipper. It was pretty much right in front of me and I actually got to see it jump up on a rock and then plunge down into the water. Uh, so that was a really interesting thing to see. Unfortunately, it looks like we're going to miss on the Williamson Sapsucker and the Clark's Nutcracker, which were two species I really wanted to see. Uh, but it's hard to be too mad when you're out in such a beautiful place. And we did get to see some pretty cool birds today as well. So I would say overall it was still an amazing day, even though we didn't get those two birds we wanted to see. While we were a little disappointed that we didn't find either of our target birds, a few days later we got some news that changed everything. The Kaiser Pass that allows access to the highest elevation on the mountain was rumored to have opened. It looks like the pass is going to be at least partially open, and it's also really chilly up here, so I can actually see my breath now when we stop and we roll down the window, so this is a much different experience than we had last time. We started walking up the road in habitat we weren't able to access a few days prior. While we were excited to have the chance to search the area, the early morning air at this high elevation was frigid. It's freezing up here. We're taking a break to sunbathe a little bit. <laughs> My hand came tripod, like holding it like this. While species diversity can be lower the more specialized the habitat is, we found a fairly high number of species as we walked. Some of the most common were yellow rumped warblers, mountain chickadees, and American robins. With many birds present, but no representatives of our target species ready to show themselves yet, we made the decision to keep climbing. So we are going to try and walk up to the top here, where our chances for Clark's Nutcracker and Williamson Sapsucker will increase. So uh, we can't drive in here, but luckily the road is plowed, so we have a clear path to walk. So I'm not sure exactly how far it is in terms of miles to get to the top, but I think that we should be able to do it. Hopefully, if we keep walking, we should be there in an hour-ish and maybe see some cool stuff along the way if we're lucky. Fingers crossed! This proved to be a great choice, as a short while later, we got a quick glimpse of one of the birds we were searching for. Got our first look at a Williamson sapsucker. It was a female and the looks were super brief, but I did get a very short video of it. So that counts as a life bird, but we would love to get some better views. We did have brief looks at that female Williamson's, so that definitely makes the hike worth it, but hopefully we can get some clearer views and maybe a Clark's Nutcracker. As we continued to climb higher, the scenery became even more breathtaking as the snow-covered mountain peaks were visible through the trees. Here, we also found another cool bird at home in coniferous forests. Just had three red crossbills foraging really nicely and then they flew off, but those, that's an awesome sighting for this habitat. After a bit more uphill walking, we had another short encounter with a pair of Williamson sapsuckers. This time giving slightly better looks. I saw it fly up. Williamson's. Williamson's. Life bird. Good looks, ish. Again, our views were brief and the sapsuckers quickly flew off. We kept walking and eventually we found ourselves at the top of the mountain. We made it to the top. It was a pretty long walk on the road. We did have a couple Williamsons along the way, which is nice. We're hoping we can get some better looks still at some of these birds and maybe even a Clark's Nutcracker, but we haven't even heard a sign that a Clark's Nutcracker is around. Walking around this area would give us our best chance at finding a Clark's Nutcracker. However, many of the best places to search were still covered in the abnormal amount of snow that had fallen on the mountain months earlier, and conspicuously still remained. So this is some snow ice pack up here on the mountains, and I'm 5'9", so this is extraordinarily high for, you know, ice, snow on the side of the road. So they had to come through and clear this, but just walking next to it, you almost feel like you're in a tunnel or something. So it's been amazing to come out and just be next to this kind of stuff. While we marveled at what felt like a winter wonderland we were walking in, we kept an eye and ear out for Clark's Nutcrackers. Then suddenly, we heard something. 
All right, we just heard a Clark's Nutcracker somewhere in this direction. So we're going to make a beeline over there. Hopefully get you guys some visuals on that. I will probably cry physical tears <laughs> if you guys get your life for Clark's Nutcracker because I know that's a huge target for you guys and I don't want you guys to leave the state without having gotten your life for Clark's, Clark's Nutcracker. So, fingers crossed. Yeah, I hope it's somewhere around here. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Clark's Nutcracker soon went silent and it became apparent that the combination of snow too high to see over and the dense trees could make it nearly impossible to see one of these birds. We heard a Clark's Nutcracker one time but we couldn't get eyes on it and it never vocalized again. So I'm not sure that we're gonna get looks at one this trip because they just don't seem like they wanna show themselves really. The cycle continued of hearing noises only to miss out on views of this elusive bird. You hear one? Over here. We're hearing a bunch of like, at, least more, at least two. There's multiple, so we're gonna get them. Fingers crossed. Foiled again. These Clarks, they like, we hear them. And they're clearly around, they just are not wanting to show themselves or perch up nicely at all. But we're gonna keep trying. It's just like tantalizingly close, it's like right there. Our efforts eventually led us to cross a stream made by the melting snow. With all the snow melt, there was kind of like a little ripper across the road. So we definitely got wet feet crossing that. Hopefully it would be worth it for some possible Clark's Nutcracker views. Sadly, even after crossing the stream, we couldn't get any views of the Clark's Nutcracker. We're gonna start heading back. We did not get a look at the Clark's. We got some okay looks at the Williamson Sapsucker, so definitely some cool species up here that we can add to our list. Would have loved to have gotten a view of the Clark's though. Maybe we'll get one on the way back. You never know, we can get a last minute lifer. Um, but for now, we're going with just the herd only. Almost as soon as the words last minute lifer were spoken, we heard and then briefly saw our lifer Clark's Nutcracker flying high in the treetops. Got a super brief actual view of a Clark's Nutcracker. It's not what I would call satisfying by any means, but I actually got to see the bird, which is massive, and I'm gonna count that sucker on my life list now. While it was only a quick encounter, it was completely worth the long walk and the effort we put in. We made our way back down the mountain, feeling happy to have found both of our target species in the Sierra Nevadas. We got a Clark's. They exist. So we got our two target birds. They just uh, warrant better looks at some point in time to truly appreciate. We also got our road stream crossing badge as well. Right. We just made it back down so that concludes our kind of walking mountain adventure. It was definitely worth it for the looks at the Clark's Nutcracker even though they were super brief and the Williamson Sapsucker. Definitely a species we'll have to see in closer detail later but thankful we were able to get those today. Had a great hike, um, beautiful views, and some awesome birds. Overall, our experience in the mountains was an amazing one. We enjoyed traversing the snow-covered forests of the Sierra Nevadas, and we'll have to come back again to get better looks at both Williamson sapsuckers and Clark's nutcrackers. We wouldn't have had any idea where to find these species in the first place, if not for our guide Rachel, who is extremely knowledgeable about the entire region. If you'd like to book a tour with Rachel, Follow the link in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.